Welcome, my dearly beloved brothers, to another weekly episode of Eagle's Eyes 2, Season 2. And I trust you have been regularly watching this episode. Please inform all your friends, all your relatives, even people whom you don't know. Tell them to watch this program, Eagle's Eyes 2, on this particular day, on this particular time, every week without fail. So, you know, yes, last week we talked about the um, conditions for the spiritual eyes to be open. So after we left uh, last week, so I've been pondering that uh, whole of that night about what further is there that we can uh, help the next generation to pursue for a breakthrough. So I pondered. And then I re reflected back on my own life, how the Lord had led me through. And I find there is another important factor is prayer. Oh, yeah. Or waiting on God. You know, yes. we commonly classify it under prayer. But uh, we can also say waiting on God is another important key or principle that we need to really practice, to really step into this realm. Yes. Don't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, I do. I, I have a question, though, because mm -hmm. each one of us, waiting on God means something different. Mm -hmm. And in my life, that had never been defined. What is it? You just sit there and waiting. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is waiting in action? What, is, what does that look okay. like? You know, in the year 1983, uh, no, the month of November, I, I can't remember the date. I was praying together with two other men of God. And one of them flows in the prophetic giftings now. And I never had uh, such giftings at that period of time. So while we, we just wanted to uh, pray, just simply pray without any agenda. And while we were worshipping the Lord, suddenly the, this brother who flows in the prophetic he began to prophesy that the Lord is in our midst. So we just began to bow down and worship the Lord in our own way. No? And then the Lord began to speak. To, he began to prophesy saying, I have come to make covenants with each one of you. And whatever covenant you would make with me, I will make a counter covenant with you. Wow. So everyone became very excited. Mm -hmm. you know? And they were all pondering what we were going to say. So there was a college professor in our midst. So he started first. He, and he said, Lord, I, I can't remember what exactly covenant he made. And after he had finished saying, there was just a silence for a few seconds. And then Lord said, if you will do this, I covenant with you that this is how I will bless you. And after he was done, was this prophetic man. So he didn't verbalize what covenant he wanted to make, but he just spoke within him. And then when he had done, he just said aloud, Amen. So during the period that he was silent, I was wondering in my heart what covenant I should make, you know. And I just pondered and pondered and pondered. I can't really come to grasp what I wanted to cover, you know. And then the Lord spoke. If a person will spend X number of hours with me. The reason why I don't want to uh, specify what is the X is because initially I thought it was a common number, you know? Mm -hmm. And I have shared that with a few people and the, and the few who wanted that particular formula, when they had spent that same number of hours in the presence of the Lord, they got nothing. And that's when I realized that that X hours that the Lord specified was specifically tailor-made yes. for me. Yeah. And it's not a common formula for everybody. Right. So since then, I refrain from specifying what's the number, you know. So if you would spend X number of hours with me, waiting on me, then I will release my saints, my martyrs, and my angels to fellowship with you. That was the first time in my life I heard about this fellowship of the saints or the fellowship of the martyrs or the fellowship of the angels. You know, I got so excited. 
Who wouldn't? Mm-hmm. Right? I said, yes, Lord. I will, I covenant that I will spend this X number of hours with you every day. And then I also went on to make two other covenants. So, uh, okay, before I make that covenant, I had a question. Because the, the Lord used the word waiting. Right. Waiting, you know. So how to wait for X number of hours? It was more than five hours, okay? How to wait? You mean just wait silently? I have the same question, right? And the Lord answered what it means to wait on Him for that period of time. He said it included three components. Praying, opening your heart, talking with God. Secondly, worship. Worship Him. And thirdly, meditating the Word of God. So waiting from that uh, definition, I realized it was being in the presence of the Lord. Being with God. Just in His presence. Mm. Have you, uh, I think you may remember our late brother Neville Johnson share about Walter Butler. Yeah, yes. Right? Have you heard of that? Yes, I have. So the Lord would call Walter Butler to wait on him, right? Right. So he just sits in the presence of the Lord and focusing on the Lord from 2 o'clock in the morning right up to daybreak. And he, he did nothing special just to keep the Lord company. Right? Mm-hmm. You remember that, mm-hmm. no? Mm-hmm. So, that is what I come to learn now. Besides quieting, besides focusing and all that, mm-hmm. just being in the presence of the Lord. Say, here I am, Lord. I have come to present myself to you. So, when the Lord explained that, so I, I determined to follow that three uh, three components in my prayer time. Worshipping the Lord, meditating the Word of God, and then spending time just opening my heart, talking with God, and then later spending waiting, waiting just mm-hmm. quietly waiting to hear Him. So that is, was how the Lord had explained it. How would you uh, define waiting on God? Well, the Lord kind of led me in the same direction as that mm-hmm. because when I first began to wait on the Lord, I had a lot of distractions. Mm. And uh, I mean, everything was a distraction to pull me away. And so I, I, as I was waiting on the Lord with expectation, mm. so uh, I remember Dr. Bruce teaching about David waiting on the Lord and how he waited as a watchman waits for the morning. Mm. And Dr. Bruce told me to look into what the word actually means. And it shows expectation. Mm. So I was doing that, but I really felt like uh, there were some components that were missing. So I thought, well, before I begin waiting on the Lord, I didn't realize it was a part of waiting, Mm -hmm. but I thought I need to worship and acknowledge Lordship. So I would get on my knees and lift my hands, and I would worship. And I thought, but I can't wait like this because it was too difficult. Mm. But I would worship sometimes as, as, as long as I felt like led of the Spirit to do so. Then I would move to my prayer time, which would I would either lie uh, prone on the ground, or I would uh, sit in my chair or something like that, and then wait with looking with expectation. So when you lie... On the ground, prostrating. Yes. Do you fall asleep? Sometimes. Hmm. It happens, you know? Yes. Right? So, this was your regular pattern of waiting on the Lord? Yes. Okay. How would you define, I mean, I'm sure over the years, you must have found a definition. Yeah, it's refined itself. Mm -hmm. The original one was I would go to the church, like I said, and pray. Mm -hmm. But I was also a worship leader. So I'd put on the music, I'd grab the mic, and I would just sing my heart out to God. Mm-hmm. I would worship Him. That's, you know, we've talked about this. We like worship music, mm-hmm. not about God, but mm-hmm. to God. Yeah. And then, always time in the Word. Mm. Always time in the Word. And the refining came when just waiting. The part for me is that one song, I wait for you. I just, that just kept going over and over in my spirit. I wait for you. And that would, again, give me the focus, give me the... Just the one sentence? Th- that's all I need. 
Hmm? Yeah, and I just wait on God, and I love you, Lord. Is that f- the you. full song? No, no, it's much more. Okay, than that, I thought you were singing now. No, no. Hmm. Look at that. Don't have my recordings. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but so for me, it's the exact same thing: prayer, just okay, talking I, to I, God, I, worship, and I am feeling that uh, there's a principle that you are uh, you have employed in your journey. when you say that uh, when you sing and all that now your heart was always in anticipation always right so i think that was a major key in your life yeah you know if we all reflect truthfully mm. there's not a time we entered his presence where he hadn't called us mm-hmm. even though we think it was our idea it's never our idea mm. that's was always an invitation always so mm-hmm. When I came to that realization, any time I felt an unction, that's him mm. calling to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, he wants to talk with me. Mm-hmm. So there was the expectation, the anticipation, mm. and the excitement. But now we are not uh, talking about uh, well, the Lord initiating because our all our audiences are novices who don't even have any unction yet. Right. So we are giving them the tools now. So. one of the tools i hear from you which i gather now is an anticipation always you want to anticipate with a loving longingness yeah like a bride longing after her bridegroom right yeah the word the word clearly says if you ask i'll answer so if i know that how could i not anticipate mm-hmm. if i come before him he's going to speak you know early in my life before i really learned the art of waiting on god i would just uh, spend time uh, because i watch the life of a man of god whom i had privilege to closely work with a very senior man of god who really walked with god as a prophet and he had these wonderful experiences of the fellowship of the saints and all that and many supernatural experiences of the heavenly realm no so i was always very fascinated to hear his encounters in the spiritual realm and um, so during the course of uh, working for him and then uh, after that i would spend time seeking the lord and uh, so i began to pattern what i've learned from his life and then with this uh, three components the lord has shared right so i would get up at 2 o'clock in the morning spend an hour worshiping the lord and then spend another hour meditating the word of god and then spend another hour just talking with god so 3 hours passed by right so i tried to just wait quietly and um my concentration would not last more than a minute or 2 minutes you know mm-hmm. and each day the concentration was building up now and before that i used to have a, i used to dream that i'm flying somewhere you know and i do not i didn't really sense of like what you had said a few weeks ago flying through the sky you know but just right. flying somewhere and this prophetic friend of mine so i wrote to him saying that i am this experience then he shared with me how to wait on god he said after you have spent uh worshiping and all that just be quiet and still quiet your mind quiet your heart quiet your body be just perfectly still and just say here i am lord speak to me your servant so i began to practice that and initially was just perfectly still for one minute then the mind will get distracted you know but day by day my ability to be still and quiet increased from 1 minute to 2 minutes 2 minutes to 5 minutes and i think eventually over a period of 7 days I was able to be still and quiet for one for 20 minutes so after that i would just go and lie down this was during the times when i was still teaching you know as a high school teacher so as soon as my head hits the pillow i would sense my leg rising up it was the lord was giving me ex, uh, practices stage by stage mm-hmm. and when i open my eyes 
I see my my physical leg is still together lying on the bed. Then I would wonder, then how come I feel another leg rising up? I would literally feel another leg rising up, but I see my put my feet on the bed. Day by day, then another day will be the the left foot. It rises up, comes down. Then the right foot rises up, come down. And then another day, the right hand goes up, comes down. <laughs> and the left hand goes up, come down. Spiritual aerobics. Yes, aerobics, <laughs> you know. And then another day, I felt my spirit come out of my body and just stood on the bed. Mm. It was a gradual experience the Lord was giving me, stage by stage. That's when I saw we have a spiritual hand, spiritual legs, and then the body came out, and then you just walk a few distance and come back into mm. the body, and the key is just being still and quiet, waiting on God. Yes. Has there Amen. been your experience? It has. It has. The stillness part. Um, it, you know, as I said, that I got the impression initially that we were not to be moving around, mm. but we were just to be in a prayerful attitude. So, And uh, I understood that the discipline of being still was, it was like the Lord was showing me piece by piece that we already know how to be physical. Mm. We're physical all day long. We know how to move. We know how to do things physically. And I felt like what he was saying is, you need to suspend that. Stillness is a way to suspend that. Be still. Mm. Uh, and as we are still, then it seems like the spirit man rises to the front because mm. it's like as long as we're trying to be active, then the, uh, the physical has preeminence. Mm. But the minute that we begin to be still, then we can allow our spirit man. Right to come to the forefront, so to mm -hmm. speak. So very much that's what the Lord also showed me, but it, it was a very, it was a kind of a long process because um, I was very undisciplined. Mm -hmm. This was a new discipline mm -hmm. to do this. Right. It was not, it didn't come naturally to me, so I had to make the effort. I had mm -hmm. to make an effort to do and, it. And that's why so many people never connect with God until they fall asleep. Mm. Yes. Because it shuts all of this mm -hmm. off, and now you're exactly attuned mm -hmm. or sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you two had practiced the same thing, right? Been still and quiet. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult for you initially? Oh, it happens, yeah. How long did it take you to really quiet yourself? Well, maybe I'm the slow guy in the group here, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have learned my lesson. Mm -hmm. um, it took me really a number of years. Mm hmm because I had no guidance whatsoever other than the word. And mm -hmm. so when I kept hitting the wall and it wasn't where I, I thought the moment a thought entered in or something, mm -hmm. I'd blown it. I got to start again. Oh, I've blown it. And I got to start again. Mm -hmm. And I understood, finally got to the revelation. No, that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. you, you've had however many years in this world of training your senses, your all of this to do whatever it wants. Now you give yourself a little grace mm -hmm. to to walk this process mm. out. So when I got that revelation, it became much easier. That uh, what he's talking about too. His testimonies actually helped me with the <clears throat> questions I was facing because oh. as he would explain these things, uh, then I would realize, okay, this is normal for me. I don't mm. have to be upset. So it actually. The time that he spent mm -hmm. actually helped me that I didn't have to spend that time. He gave me the answer. Uh, how many years have you been doing this uh, school of translation? What was it five, six years? Six years. Michael's been part of every right. Yeah. Every school. Every school. Okay. Of translation. Yeah. Right. So I have heard some. Uh, people who came to your school of the of their testimonies mm -hmm. that they have been particularly very blessed when you that when you thought on waiting on God mm -hmm. and uh, the part where they were so blessed is because you gave some very practical uh, pointers 
Yeah. You made it very simple and very approachable. And this was a comment they made between compared me and yours, you know. <laughs> I said, you make it sound so unapproachable. But Michael, this was so simple, so approachable. So I've always wanted to get an opportunity to talk with you, to learn something from you, you know. That is, that's kind of funny to me. No, no, it's not funny. It's, <laughs> it's honestly truthful. So please share uh, with us, what are the simple practical pointers that you share in your messages or in the schools that can be very helpful to our younger generation? The, uh, the practical things that I share, they don't seem very spiritual mm -hmm. if you just look at the surface of right. it. Um, but it is basically that people have to, first of all, settle that this is what they really want. Mm -hmm. It can't be a passing interest. And then, of course, have a biblical proof mm -hmm. to give them peace in their heart to pursue. But if they've settled those things, now we come to the practical parts, which is actually setting aside time to spend with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, and not just being haphazard in it. It's like, well, if I find the time, I'll do mm -hmm. it. It can't be that. They can never find the time. They will never find the mm -hmm. time. So, and in my own life, I tried to wait on the Lord during the evening, but there was just too much distraction. Mm -hmm. I would tell the kids, please don't bother me. And 20 minutes later, they'll be knocking on the they're door. They're knocking on the door. <laughs> yes. Dad, we need to borrow money or whatever. Uh, but so I realized that wasn't going to work for me. So the Lord led me to wait till everyone is asleep mm -hmm. in the house and then go to your time in prayer um, when no one is around anyway. The phones aren't ringing. So you did not purpose to get up early in the morning, but you did late in the evening, is it? That's what I originally thought, uh -huh. that I would wait on the Lord before I went to bed. Okay. But that. But don't you feel very tired after a hard day's work? I did feel very tired. And so how could you wait? This, did your body cooperate it? It, it did not. <laughs> so I was, I was working two jobs. Uh-huh. At the time, and I would work between 60 to 70 hours a week. Wow. And um, at working a lot of overtime at one of my jobs. And so, so every day you work for how many hours? 12 hours. 12 hours, right? Yeah. So then when you come back home, what time What time would you be when you reach home? So I would, I would be back home at 7, 7.30, okay. something like that. So after dinner and some time with your family, what time do you really have to be alone? What time would it be? So I, I could not be alone until at least 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock. So you have practically more than 12 hours a day. And then finally, when you get alone to be with the Lord? Yes. And I had basically seven hours mm -hmm. if I chose to be with the Lord all night. Really? I mean, because I had to get up for work the next morning. So I mean... Wow. So you had a full day of working. I did. And then you pursued the Lord the whole night. That became my passion. Mm. But not because, you know, I'm, I was just so passionate mm. as a person. But once I had a taste of the heavenly gift, mm. once the Lord spoke to me, I, I would go. I couldn't pass up spending the night in prayer because I would always say, what if tonight is the night of visitation? Mm. And I would miss it because I want to go lay down and get some sleep. So I thought, I'll just wait on the Lord a little bit first. Mm -hmm. But it never worked out that way. Okay, so a pointer number one is to set time. Set a time. And then what are the practical things you shared with the, in the school? Okay, so um, practical is that you don't want anything physical pulling you back from the things of the Spirit. Mm. Uh, your watch clicking, ticking, or no noises in the background that are distracting. I'm not talking about worship, light worship music. I'm talking about random noises of any kind uh, that could possibly pull you back or distract you. I could never listen to worship songs while waiting on the Lord. I don't either. Could you? But I do when I worship. It, it, yeah, that, that's it, worship. Yeah, yeah, it brings you into a place. Right. But, but no. when you... When you're waiting, right. then you should be still and yeah. quiet. 
Yeah, I, that's the, what I would have mm-hmm. next, also stillness and quiet. Mm-hmm. But so I would, I, the, the Lord taught me all this through making mistake after mm-hmm. mistake because I would wait on the Lord for two hours and then all of a sudden I would feel like I, I'm having a visitation of some sort. I would feel the atmosphere change. And then my glasses would slide down my nose um, and it would distract me. That little act would distract me enough that it would just pull me out of being that spiritual connection. But why are you wearing your glasses when you're waiting on the Lord? That was what the Lord asked me. What are you doing wearing your glasses? So I, and so the Lord said, So that you can see better? <laughs> it didn't work too good. <laughs> but, but so that was just something practical that the Lord had to show me through the mistakes that I was making. So the Lord said, don't wear tight clothing because you're waiting on the Lord. You're not, you're not dressing up to mm-hmm. go to the, to the ball. So wear comfortable clothing so you're not distracted by that. Uh, be in a quiet atmosphere so you're not distracted by that. Don't wear jewelry. Don't wear your watch that mm-hmm. makes noise. Don't wear your glasses that, that slide uh, down your face. Anything that will distract you. It's like being in a recording studio. Mm-hmm. They told you don't wear anything noisy uh, when you're working in a recording studio because the microphone picks up mm-hmm. everything. So, um, so that was another practical thing, mm. to be actually ready physically and then have a place that you're going to pray that is also not a distraction. Mm. Because I tried waiting on the Lord on my knees, but that didn't work because... It, my knees would get sore after mm-hmm. a while, and then my focus went from the Lord to my knees. So I realized that after I was done worshiping, uh, or I felt I was done worshiping on my knees, then I would sit in my chair, or I would lay mm-hmm. on the ground. And so that was also a practical thing. Not that I wouldn't worship. Sometimes I would continue to worship as the Holy Spirit led. But so that was another practical thing that I had to do. Mm. Another practical thing was learn to be still. Because the Lord spoke to me about this in a real practical way. Because as I was, when I first began to waiting on the Lord, I wanted it so bad that I would, I would kind of like be very intense and that intensity would show on my face. Mm. So I'm waiting on the Lord, and my brow looks like this, a, a furrowed brow. My, mm. my jaw would be tight. And I would realize that those very things were keeping me out of rest mm-hmm. and keeping me from the breakthrough as well. Mm-hmm. So the Lord said, was speaking to me about this also, to pay attention not just to the physical surroundings, but what is my body doing? Is my body still trying to lead the way, or am I yielding to the spirit man? Mm. So the stillness became, uh, you have to be at rest also. So I had, I had to ask myself, am I really at rest, mm. and why not? No, be, I'm not at rest okay. because... That's a good point that you touch, rest. We need to elaborate that next week. Okay. All right? Right. My dear brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, you have learned much about the practicalities about waiting on God. And um, now this is a very important keyword that Dr. Bruce touched a few weeks ago to come to a place of rest. And Brother Michael has also touched that very important point. So we will discuss this in detail next week. God bless you all till we meet again next week. 